So I love having chickens, just as I love having my own children, which we just had another, by the way. Uh, and he's perfect, so thank you to everyone who has uh, congratulated us and everything on social media. That is very cool. So anyway, I love having chickens, but that doesn't mean I haven't made some mistakes along the way while raising them. And in fact, as they grew from uh, little pullets up to uh, full grown laying hens, um, they became a bit more high maintenance and I made some mistakes along the way and I learned from those mistakes. So in this video, I want to talk about three big issues that I had raising my chickens and I'll talk about how I solved those problems. And also later in this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the best things you could do for your chickens, which is to spoil them with some delicious and nutritious treats. Who wants some treats? Who wants some? Hey, hey. Hey, hey. They're all big hey, hey, basically. Uh, these black soldier fly larvae from Grubterra, which I will talk about later in this video, so stick around for that and a special discount code for all of my viewers if you wish to purchase this. So now, let's get into the three big mistakes that I made raising chickens. Let's go. So all of our um, issues that we had with our laying birds didn't actually start until we added uh, a new flock of birds to our coop. So uh, our story is we got our first six um, chicks, uh, Rhode Island Red um, laying birds in uh, September of 2020, 2020. So those were our first six birds and they just had a little portion, the coop wasn't as big as it is now, we expanded it. Um, I'll get into that later. But So it was just those six. They started in a brooder, grew up all um, together, and then they came out to our coop. And I have some old footage of that that I'll um, throw in to, to show. Um, how things changed uh, throughout the, this past year. So I actually was thinking about that the, the other day is that I'm actually an experienced um, chicken tender now because it's been over a year since I've had chickens, which is kind of cool. I didn't even realize that. So those Rhode Island Reds, those first six grew all together. And then it was in March of 2021, we added six more white leghorns. So we got a different breed in here that they, uh, the white leghorns lay a little bit more eggs per year than the Rhode Island Reds, but they're both really great um, breeds. They're, they're great chickens to have in your backyard. Um, so the issues didn't start until we added those six uh, white leghorns. Because what happens is the, uh, the dominant ones, the ones that have been here, the Rhode Island Reds, were already fully grown, and they, um, they fight over space in the coop. They fight over having to share food that they weren't used to sharing. So there's a lot of bullying that goes on. And that kind of is upsetting because I'm someone that used to work with, with kids and uh, that was like my biggest pet peeve was the bullying. But it's apparently totally normal. This is just what happens in nature. The big uh, animal wants to bully the smaller animal. So we had to deal with that. But the best way that we had to, to deal with that was building our chicken tractor. So what I had to do was build the chicken tractor so I could separate the young white leghorns from the big Rhode Island Reds. And what that did was enable them to eat their food without the big, um, the big birds eating all of their food so that they could, you know, we want the white leghorns to grow and get as big as the white, uh, as the Rhode Island Reds. Um, so we noticed that um, we didn't do that soon enough and the white leghorns are, they're already a smaller, they're a smaller bird, they're a smaller breed. So they're good for like confined coops like we have. Uh, we can't really free range here. So I think, you know, if you're someone that wants to st start a small uh, flock in your backyard, that the white leghorn is a great one to use because they're comfortable in a small space. They're smaller birds, so you know they'll fit in a small coop at night, and uh, and yeah, they've been they've been great. 
and they've been our best layer. Um, so, yeah, bullying and um, the bullying was tough, but keeping them separated with the chicken tractor until they were big enough to, you know, kind of take care of themselves was a really big help um, in helping them get big enough and healthy. And then there was still bullying when we moved them back in after they spent a few weeks, uh, maybe a month in the tractor, but that went away after a few weeks and now they're very comfortable with each other. Another thing that uh, kind of not proud about, but it's just part of that whole learning process of moving these young birds in with the big birds too soon, was that, I don't know if you could see behind me, there's a white little window door um, on, the, on their coop. And so for a while, I was trying to separate them in the morning just so that the little white leghorns could get enough food. And then I was putting them back in the coop at night. And it was just too much of a hassle and kind of annoying. But what happened with that door is I was putting these young uh, white leghorn chicks in through that door. And the, the big, I tried to separate the, the, um, the Rhode Island Reds from them when I was putting them back in the coop. But, it, you know, some of the, <sighs> one night there was a, a couple of them got in there, the, the big birds and the little leghorns tried to run out of the coop through that opening as I was closing the door and one of the baby chick's um, toes got jammed in the door when I was shutting it and you know, they lost, one of them lost a toenail and then I had to do all this first aid on this little uh, chicken and it really like broke my heart. I didn't notice it until the next day when I saw blood on the floor of the coop and I found the chicken that was bleeding and there was a huge gash on her toe so what we did was bring her inside we put some triple antibiotic on her cut and uh, oh. wrapped it in gauze and a few days later it looks like her toenail completely fell off but we kept her apart from the rest of the flock um, to try to keep her foot dry before we put her back and um, we also gave her some uh, a foot bath and some Epsom salt and then you know we wrapped her toe up again and um, we yeah, checked it okay. um, every few days we were checking it and eventually it kind of healed up um, I'll have to take a look because one be of right. my white leghorn chickens it was a white leghorn chicken that it happened to probably is without a toenail but all of all of my birds are laying eggs so it was just um, something that happened that we had to deal with um, but um, she still grew and is producing eggs for us and is still happy so it is what it is things happen animals get hurt but uh, we did the best we could to uh, fix her up and she's still alive so can't beat myself up too bad so I learned from those mistakes um, and we actually ended up getting four more birds uh, we got four Americanas in April of 2021, just a month apart from when we got the white leghorns. And I had already built the chicken tractor at that time, so I had those four um, Americanas um, completely grow up in the chicken tractor. So they were separate from all of these fully more um, grown birds the entire time they were growing. So they got enough food, they grew up, and they grazed the back half of our property, of our, of our farm property, side of our property. Um, so they helped fertilize our field that we are growing vegetables in. They got fresh bugs and dirt to uh, dig in every day because we moved the tractor every day. And uh, at that point we had 16 birds, which was another issue um, that I'm gonna go in. Our, our second issue we had was uh, inconsistent egg laying. And so we had 16 birds in too small of a space. We didn't even add um, this um, part of the run was something that I added later um, because I stressed out the flock so much by adding and changing things too much by adding so many new birds that it was stressing them out I think and they weren't laying as much as they had been so I gave them more run space I, I doubled and tripled their run space and uh, then that started to continue uh, another thing I realized well I was watching uh, Roots and Refuges um, vlog from this morning 
she mentioned she was talking about inconsistent you know egg laying problems with with her birds and what she realized is that when her chickens uh, feet get wet they end up laying less eggs you know and usually in the winter time you know the egg laying production goes down because there's less sunlight but that's just something that she noticed that um, when their chickens are feet are able to stay dry if you're able to do that by covering you know like putting a roof over their run so that their bedding stays dry that might help you continue to get um, egg production even in the darker months and colder months of winter so that's something else to consider if you have um, inconsistent egg laying problems in your own flock. Another thing we um, also did to help with the lack of egg laying, the inconsistent egg laying, was I made a change in their feed, um, thinking that maybe it had, that played some part because I had given them the same feed, um, you know, the entire time up until they stopped laying. So. I changed their feed and I made a couple videos about doing uh, your own, making your own chicken feed that I'll link above if you haven't seen those, but that also helped changing the feed and putting a few different ingredients in there. I, I added in like wheat, wheat berries and, and uh, peas and um, I think that really helped just giving them different um, grains in their diet. So that's something else to consider if you're also having issues with with your chickens laying eggs. Another thing that I did, um, like I said earlier, we all of a sudden had 16 birds and uh, you know, we started with six. So like there's a thing called chicken math where you know, you say you're only gonna get a few birds and you end up getting way more than that. Chicken math is real. And then from six to 16, it was way too much. Even with our space expanded, the run space expanded. So we ended up giving a bunch of the birds away. Um, actually six of them we gave away so we still have um, a combination of each kind. We have a few of the white leghorns, the Rhode Island reds, and the Americanas. So we'll still have the colorful uh, array of eggs, but uh, now we only have 10 laying birds and it's a perfect amount for our run space and with our coop. So that's another thing that we did to eliminate the uh, egg laying inconsistencies and They've still been laying eggs. We're in the middle of November now, and we're still getting, um, from our 10 birds, we're getting three to four eggs a day right now. That might change as it gets darker and colder, but uh, it's still pretty cool, um, you know, even though the days are getting shorter and colder, to still come out to fresh eggs every morning. All right, so I think there's been enough talk about my mistakes that I've made as a chicken tender, but here is something that you can do right for your chickens, and that, is feed them some delicious black soldier fly larva from Grub Terra. So I'm flattered that Grub Terra reached out and asked me to uh, speak about their product and review their product and it was a no-brainer because I've already been following their company for a while on Instagram and I knew about their values. All right so what Grub Terra is doing differently than other uh, companies is they are making their soldier fly larva using food waste that would typically go into landfills and they're upcycling that food waste and turning it into grubs and treats for your chickens. Grub Terra works on reducing waste that enters landfills by upcycling food waste from local restaurants and supermarkets. This reduces the output of methane gas from landfills which is 10 times more potent than CO2 gas. So with every one pound of larva sold, they are upcycling 20 pounds of food waste. And that's really cool. So if you support what they're doing, you can vote with your wallet for a better future for the planet. Now you can find other brands of soldier fly larva treats for your birds at the local feed store or tractor supply. But what sets this company apart from those big box stores is they are a small business. Grub Terra's black soldier fly larvae are packed with vital nutrients that are a natural stable in chicken's diets. With extra calcium, their larva helps chickens lay stronger, healthier eggs and help with feather growth when molting. I like giving my birds these because they are unable to free range here, so we could still give them access to bugs they would otherwise find free ranging, but so that they're not missing out on certain things in their diet. And the best part about these treats is that they're totally natural, never processed, with no preservatives. 
So maybe I should stop talking so much and give these birds a taste of this delicious black soldier fly larva. Let's see what they think. Who wants some treats? Who wants some treats? Who wants some? Hey, 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 wait your turn. What do you guys think? Is it any good? Oh boy. Anything? I'm trying to give a review on this, guys. What do you think? Is it good? Oh my goodness. Okay. Don't hurt each other, guys. I think they like it. Brownie? Hey. Get off the water. What are you doing? Do you guys want a treat? You want some soldier fly larva? You want some? Huh? What do you think, guys? Girls. You like Reptera? I'm glad you like it. Use your words. Brownie, what do you think? Good? Good. Now if you're interested in getting um, these Grubterra products for your birds, you can use the code GRUB10 and you can get 10% off any uh, products in the Grubterra store. So thanks Grubterra for reaching out and Let's get back to the video. Another issue we had um, that we didn't have until we got the white leghorns um, as baby chicks was something called pasty butt. And sounds gross. Uh, it is gross. It's when the uh, baby chicks poop and their poop gets stuck to their, uh, at the time they have really um, like downy like fur and it gets stuck in their vent um, where they poop and you need to remove that poop or you know they could get sick and potentially die if that's clogging up the vent where they you know where they poop so what um what you need to do is get a warm washcloth and gently not push but just kind of um, pat down um, where the poop is stuck until it um, comes loose and you kind of clean it off but you don't want to push on it and like damage their, you know, pull their, their fur. Um, so you want to gently just pat their butt and get the poop off. Kind of gross, kind of like uh, cleaning the toddler, uh, toddler's uh, dirty diaper, but it, um, something you have to do to make sure that your baby chicks grow to be big and strong like mine are now. Okay, so the last issue that I had raising my chickens, and basically all of these issues go back to um, my first problem I had, which was moving the small baby chicks in with the older chicks. That was the, the issue with all of these other issues I had. But this last issue was the younger chickens pooping in the nesting box in the coop. Um, you guys better not be in the nesting so box. The very Get out, The easiest out, solution out, I found no. was to find a Come small on, piece of plywood and just block the entry to the uh, nesting box at night. I was only doing that at night because what I found was that the young birds were going into the nesting box to sleep and cuddle together and they were pooping in there while they were sleeping. So I was eliminating them the ability to do that by just putting a, a piece of plywood in to block the opening so they couldn't do that. And in the morning I was removing that um, piece of wood so that the actual birds that were actually laying could get in there to lay their eggs. Um, I did still have uh, some issues with that with uh, the new Americanas because they were the youngest of all my birds and they started pooping in the nesting box um, in the middle of the day. So what I did was I just grabbed them from the nesting box and I put them in the chicken tractor. Kind of like, uh, I don't want to think of it as like a prison sentence uh, because them being out on on the on the field in the tractor with access to bugs and grass isn't really a prison sentence but I just wanted them to know not to do that so I want them to remember if they go in there and poop in there they're going by themselves in the tractor and they don't want to be by themselves in the tractor they want to be with uh, the rest of the flock so um, hopefully they learned their lesson because it didn't seem to happen again after that but also 
um, they all started laying eventually, and that wasn't a problem anymore. Because once they start laying, they don't poop in the nesting box, you know, where the eggs are. They just naturally know not to do that. Um, so yeah, those were uh, all of the biggest issues that I've had raising my chickens. Um, and that's going to wrap up this video. Um, if you found any of this information helpful, give this video a like. And please subscribe to our channel. Uh, that would be super helpful to us. And we'll keep doing content like this. Thank you to Grubterra for reaching out and allowing me to uh, talk about their product. And uh, please uh, don't forget to uh, check out that discount code, uh, GRUB10, at their uh, grubterra.com website. And you could get some delicious black soldier fly larva for your backyard flock of chickens. So thanks for watching this video, um, and we'll see you next time.